Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the caching service that's built into Maverick's server. Now the caching service uh, allows you to actually take things that you would normally download from the Mac App Store and create a copy of those updates and those downloads on your server so that all of your clients in your network will then go to your server to get those updates instead of uh, downloading their own separate updates onto each of your different Mac computers. So this way it saves bandwidth uh, inside your network and allows you to only have to download it once and then from there everybody gets, your, uh, gets their updates from your server. Now the caching service does integrate with the Mac App Store and so anything that you would download from the Mac App Store is what would be caught with the caching service. Now in a previous screencast we talked about software update and talked about uh, using that uh, to get your updates and so what I thought I'd do is compare uh, the caching server with software update. Now one of the things you can do is you can run these two services simultaneously. You don't have to only run one run one or the other. You can run them together, so I just wanted to let you know that. But let's talk about the differences between these two. Uh, the first is that Software Update only caches Mac updates, whereas the caching service will cache not only Mac updates, but also any purchases you have on the Mac App Store, both for Macs and iOS devices. So anything that you've pur purchased there would be cached. Uh, also, Software Update uh, will allow you to manually configure uh, your client, so you have to actually manually configure each client to use it. Uh, and we talked about how to do that in the software update uh, screencast that I did. But with the caching server, all you have to do is be on the same network as the server that has the caching uh, service running on it. So there's no configuration for your clients. They will automatically look for a caching server on your network and then tap into it uh, to look for their updates and downloads. So that's kind of nice that it's got zero uh, configurability. Now, the other thing is that Software Update will download all of your updates when it's fired up, whereas the caching server will only download updates when someone has requested it. So when a, uh, one of your client machines uh, downloads a, pro, a program or when it requests an update, that update will be downloaded and saved on the server. It won't just automatically download everything that you've got. So it does manage it that way. Uh, software update though does allow you to have more client management so you can determine which things are downloaded and which things are enabled whereas in the caching service pretty much everything that you've got uh, on the Mac App Store that you've purchased uh, will be cached and so there isn't any client management on that it just works that way. So one of the ways that I could conceive of you kind of using these two together is you might want to use software update for some of your legacy software uh, things that uh, might not be in your Mac App Store so if you've got any Macs that are uh, you know, under 10.8, you would use the software update. And then you can use the caching service for everything else. And uh, I would also use the software update service in a managed mode. That way you don't have duplicates of some of these updates uh, across your uh, two services. And that will make it a little easier to manage. Okay, so let's take a look at how to set up the caching service. And so I want to walk through the various settings and things that are here in the service now that you've kind of got an idea of how it works. Uh, as you can see, the service is off. We've got our statuses offline. Uh, so in order to, to uh, cache, we've got to turn on the service. Uh, a couple of settings before we do that. Now, first of all, you can set the permissions for your caching server to work the way that you want it to work. You can see right now it's defaulted to only local subnets. If I just click Edit here, you can see that I can change this to be you know, cache client content connecting from and I can say all networks, only some networks, or only local subnets. So it allows you to specify uh, the actual subnets or the IP addresses of where you want people to look for your caching service. So if I said all networks, for instance, you notice it changes it and it says clients originating from the same public IP address will use this uh, cache. So in other words, that'll match what my public IP is. Uh, I can also come in here and serve clients with certain public IP addresses, either the ones matching the server's network or on other networks. And then I get this drop down where, I'm to, where I need to put in uh, what the network is, creating a new network and getting that set up. Now where this would come into play is if you've got multiple servers on a network, and uh, you know, you've got one that you want to use as a caching server and the other one you're using for other services, uh, that's when you would be able to set this up to specific networks that your clients would look to in order to get uh, the cache, you know, have their, um, you know, in order to get their updates from your caching server. Uh, now what I'm going to do is just say matching the server's network 
And uh, again, you can do it on your local subnet or only on some networks, and then you have to specify which networks they would be. And you can see only cache uh, content for clients on these networks. And so you can, again, just sort of specify what that is. And this, again, this comes into play a lot more if you're dealing with uh, a bigger network or you're in a business or something like that. And so I'm just going to say local subnets and leave that alone. So we're just going to cancel it and just leave it at its default. Now, the other thing you can do is set the volume for where you want uh, the caches to go. Now, my recommendation is that you have some kind of external drive or maybe the second drive inside your server to do this from uh, because over time you're adding all of these updates and the uh, amount of space that uh, your caching server can use can get rather big depending on how many apps and updates and things that you're downloading. So in order to change that, if you just come in here to edit, uh, you can you can uh, choose where you want it to go. Like if I say here on the Drobo, and I choose it, and it says, you sure you want to uh, store caching stuff uh, information on the Drobo? I'll say continue. And so now it's, cha it's changing the caching service data location, copying the files you need. And so now you see it's set up on my Drobo now to do the caching there. And that's a better spot because it basically will save that info. If I go into... Um, my Drobo here. Let's just come down here to my Drobo. And if I go in, what happens is, is it sets up this library file here and then a server folder and then you've got your caching folder right there. So that's where it actually stores all of the data is inside this folder right here. Um, and so just in case you wanted to know where that, where that gets set up, that's where it goes. So we're going to go ahead and put that down. All right, so now that I've got it set, what I can do is I can set the size uh, that I want uh, for the caching to go up to. So I can say unlimited, and that means it's just going to keep adding the updates uh, until I run out of drive space. Or I can move this slider, as you can see, and say how big I want the caches to get. You know, I only want them to get so big. I can go ahead and move the slider to actually say how big I want it to be. And you can see on the low end here, it'll say 25 uh, gigabytes. Uh, I'm just going to leave it on unlimited for right now, uh, but you can go ahead and slide that to wherever you want. And then finally down here, you have your usage uh, where you can basically reset uh, your usage. So if you've got a lot of caches in there and all of a sudden you decide you want to start over, you can reset it. And once you do that, like if I tap reset, it says, hey, you sure you want to delete all the downloaded content? You'd say reset and it would go back to nothing and have, have nothing on there. I'm just going to cancel that. So you do have the option just with one click to go ahead and delete any cache stores that get stored up. So let's go ahead and start the service. I'm just going to throw the switch here and turn it on. And you can see now it's available. It says devices on my local update or uh, network are automatically going to use this service. And again, how it works is that the first client that downloads the update, it gets stored on your server. Uh, the second client that does the update is actually going to use what's on your server as opposed to using what is on Apple servers. And again, like I said, it saves you bandwidth and makes it a lot easier to use. So as you begin to download content, you'll start to see it showing up here. So what I'm going to do is try to download some updates and then just let you let you see what it looks like here on this bar. Okay, so here I uh, did some downloads. I downloaded uh, something from the Mac App Store, from the iOS Store, and from uh, iBooks. And you can see it shows me kind of the designation of my software. You notice I've got 46.3 megabytes used. And uh, that's now available. You can see here it shows me how much on my Mac software, how much uh, in my iOS software in terms of how much I have there. And then iBooks is over here in a different uh, color showing me the size that I've used up of this 46.3 megabytes. And so as you download more stuff, these lines start to you know kind of shift depending on how much you have in each category. And it just gives you a nice visual of what you have in your caching server. So now if anybody else on my network goes to download those same pieces of software that I downloaded or books, it's going to actually get them from my server, not from Apple's servers. And like I said, that helps save bandwidth. So that's all I have for this week. Hopefully that helps you really understand uh, the caching service. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.